able to Hi everyone, this is Miss Bowen from Pep Practice. We have practice. Okay, so the meeting is recorded, yes, and um, it will be on our YouTube page. So this is a public session that will be aired on our YouTube page and we are going to, you can watch it over. Um, as I said, for that purpose, I just want everyone in the class to just kind of, um, yes, yeah, just focus on us getting a head start this year um amidst all of what is taking place we're back online one more year and um yes we know what it is um it's not an easy situation for everyone and that's why we do these public session because i just want to fill in all of the gaps that i'm missing and tying everything together and teach new skills that you might not learn at school and just to give you the real insight of what is going to be on the PEP examination, you really cannot go wrong when you're on this. Um, doing these classes are on the YouTube page, are on the resources that I, I am going to share with you. So it is just really, really vital that you just follow the instruction come here to put out your best and know that these results. I had students, and funnily, yes, I had students from my public sessions that I didn't have private with. I have private classes, but I had students. I'm sharing the link in the chat now that we're going to use for the session today. I would really appreciate if you could follow on your devices and let's just read through and um, get some work done. All right, so I'm sharing it in the chat. So that's the link that we're using today. I'm going to be sharing a lot of links and a lot of tools and my passcode for some of these device um, applications that are paid applications. So I have my license and my, yes, it's like a license in, in any event. And you can use them to, I'll be using two links today. Um, the other link is from my personal platform. If you're not signed up to the platform, you may not be able to access that link. But, um, yes, a lot of students from my public sessions last year reached out to me after the examination and told me how well they did. Um, so you just have to put your best foot forward and try to learn the skills and strategies and um, try to bring them out in your application in doing your performance task. A lot of grade six starts to grade five performance task that was not done. And then the grade six ability test come next year in 2022. You can reply in the chat. I'll give you instances where you can unmute your microphone and speak. Um, and then we can yes, move to a productive session. Um, so I do these sessions either on a Friday or a Saturday every week. Usually we do that for three or four, but I did it more than four weeks. But I'm starting this session now. We're doing the classes to get prepared for the one, the performance task examination, um, first and foremost. That's why this series is here to prepare for the language art and mathematics performance tasks mostly, and you'll get resources to do the other performance tasks. So it's a pre-writing, pre-writing strategies or skills, workshop and problem solving workshop. What we're doing today is problem solving. Um, and then we're going to do pre-writing strategies on another occasion. And you can find the short videos on the YouTube page for the different skills, the particular skills 
And then you can also find the other classes that we did from last term, the ability test series. The ability test series and you can see all of this, the topics that we covered there to prepare you for your ability test coming up next year or the year that you have the examination given that you're in grade five. So I hope that everyone is on the link. I'm not going to be sharing that link first. I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard. We're going to have a discussion and then we're going to go, we're going to refer to that link during the discussion. All right, so again, we're doing the problem solving lecture. And we're looking at the problem solving steps. And this is a mathematics class. And we know today's date is the 11th of September. If you have a notebook out, feel free to write also. This is information that you're going to be using overall. All right, Michaela. Michaela. Yes, Miss. Okay. What is the first thing that you do when you're trying to solve a problem? Find the you find the, the okay there's really no wrong or right answer. just what you do. what do you do when you're solving a problem can you hear me it's i can longer. hear you i can hear you clearly you find out the operation that you're doing like if Right. So you're finding the operator. How do you know what operator to use? So, like if, like if the other, like if the, can you write a sentence with a problem solving, please? All right. Fair enough. Um. So I think what you're saying is you're looking for keywords and clue words to tell you that that's what's to be done. Such as total yes, or um, subtract. And we're going to look at that. That's one of the pre writing strategies. And we're going to look at that. That's, however, the second process. That's the second thing you do. So that's fine. I can put that in there. You're trying to make a plan. And when you make a plan, you're looking for problem solving strategies. So I'm not going to put make a plan as yet. I'm just going to put problem solving strategy, such as identifying two words. All right. But the first thing that you're doing, anyone else want to try the first thing that you do? Just tell me the first thing that you do when you're solving a problem. I just want to find out. Um, Malik Robinson. Try to give yourselves um, your correct names. All right. Name the devices that you're using so you can, um, I can refer to you by your name. This, um, are you circle the question? That's the first thing you do. Find out the question. Find out, find out the question. All right, fair yeah. enough. Why do you need to find out the question? Because you need to know what you're um going to do with, and right. what you're gonna find out. What you, what you're supposed to be doing in the problem, right? Yes, yes. So you're reading, right? Or circling, or whatever you're trying to do. So I won't say read, but the basis of what you're trying to do is to understand the problem, right? Understand the problem. Fair enough? Yes, miss. Why do you think it's important for you to understand the problem? Can anyone tell me why do you think it's important for you to understand the problem?
Shanoya Hines, why do you think it's important for you to understand the problem? Can anyone tell me why I think it's important for you to understand the problem? It's important for you to understand the problem. Go ahead. I see your microphone. Um, is it your last name is Colin. It's important for you to understand the problem because you need to know what you're dealing with. What is it that you want to do? Or what is it the problem is asking you to do to solve the problem, to solve it? So you basically need to understand the problem understand what it is asking you to do. Only then will you be able to proceed through the problem. What are some of the things you think will happen if you don't understand the problem? You won't know what sense to use. You won't know, repeat. You won't know what sign to use. Which sign to use, which um, operation to use. Yes. Yes. You won't know what to do altogether. If you don't know what to do, how do you think you might feel? If you don't know what you're doing and you're still start doing the problem, will you feel happy or excited to do the problem? If you don't know what to do in the while you're solving the problem, you're working through the question and you don't know what to do. Will you feel happy or you want to continue or feel confident? Do you think you feel confident? No, you won't feel confident. You won't feel like you're inclined to do the problem or you won't feel like you want to continue because you don't understand what to do. So it's very important that you understand your problem before you even proceed. And that's also factual for real life situations. Anything that you're undertaking, it's best that you understand it so you can proceed through it and you know what to do. So after you understand the problem, Michaela, you told me about identifying the keywords and clue words. That's basically making a plan to solve the problem, all right? When we make a plan to solve the problem, we can either draw a helpful diagram we can use a table we can write equations we can use a diagram as i said before we can use counters we can identify keywords and keywords so we're making a plan and basically making a plan all you're doing is just identifying problem solving strategies that you can use to solve your problem all right Yes, miss. Okay, great. Yes, miss. Yes, miss. I hope everyone is clear. These are very new information to you, and I don't really expect you to grasp them immediately, and that's why I'm sharing the resources with you. And hopefully you'll be as um, inclined to research, do read the resources that I'm, I sent you are, I'm going to share with you over the course of this series. And once you continue to do so and use the resources, then I don't see where you should have a problem. All right. So when we look at problem solving strategies, as I was saying, we look at um drawing a diagram or drawing a picture. I'm sure you're accustomed to drawing little stick men when you were younger in preschool or primary school, preparatory school, like the, the younger part of the, um, the class is grade one to three. And our grades one to three draw a diagram so you if they said six stick men or six men you draw six stick men or three carrots you drive three carrots so it still also it applies okay so you can draw a diagram or a picture and then 
you have to identify keywords and keywords. Addition, subtraction, keywords, all right. Identify keywords. You can write it down as a jotting in your book. Again, I'm going to share a Word document with the information I'm sharing. I usually do this. I'm sharing my email address. Okay, very good, Shanoya. I'm reading what is in the chat now. So I'm sharing my email address and the website and other resources, as I was saying, that you can use to learn more about what we're, di we're discussing in the class. As I said, we're going to be using some of those links today and in upcoming sessions. I shared my email in the chat. I'm gonna share my number shortly. Identify keywords and clues. I can just write clues, keywords and clues. You can draw a table or you can use tokens. So when you were, again, younger in school, the teacher would have, the teacher would have giving you tokens, butter covers or otherwise, and you use them to count, count amounts. So if it says 20 pies, you take out 20 little butter cork and you add them with the remaining, whatever it is from the problem. We're going to be sharing the problem shortly. It's in the link that was shared earlier. So I will copy and share shortly. Um, so I'm gonna put use tokens here and others i'm going to share the word document as i said via email you can share message um send an email to me i'll share my number too as well you can send a message i'll let the appearance send a message to me and then we can um share the resources i can share the resources to you so you can use tokens so basically that's how we make a plan to solve our problem all right and then we carry out that plan. It's important for us to carry out that plan because if we make a plan, if we don't carry it out, if you make a plan and you carry it out, then it's only fair that you're going to understand what you're doing. If you make a plan and you don't carry out the plan, Yes. It's you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to see the results, the same results. Sorry about that. You're not going to be able to see the same result if you didn't carry out that plan. Say, for instance, we're doing so that's the third step, carry out the plan. Carry out the plan that we made. So whatever plan that we made here to draw a diagram or a picture, identify keywords or clues, draw a table, use tokens to solve our problem, we have to carry out that plan. But also in real life, it applies. If we make a plan, it's best to stick to the plan and carry out, or else we get, won't get the same results, all right? We won't get the same results yes, what we plan. Say for instance, yes, we're playing um, football. Football is a sport that um people do a lot of planning and organization in order to achieve the results that they're going there to do that's why we have the coach so for instance if you are on a football team and your coach made a plan and another person is defending and one is attacking and that's what he's set up to do on every meeting the other person is attacking say for instance um i'll use myself um, I'm doing the attacking and you're doing the defending. And once we make that plan, every time that we meet, we are saying that I'm attacking, you're defending. And when we go on the football field, I don't do any attacking and you don't do any in defending. We're doing the opposite, meaning that I'm trying to defend and trying to not make the goals score and you're trying to attack and score the goals. 
then we won't get the same results that we plan to get when we met every meeting because we didn't do what we planned, right? Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to make plans, even when we're taking trips, it's good that we make plans to see what we're doing. Similarly to when we're solving a problem, we have to make a plan so we can see our way through the problem. And you see that in upcoming sessions where we use diagrams and identify keywords and clues and draw tables and carry out all the different problem solving strategies to solve the problems and then you'll see how you can make plans to solve your problem rather than just starting to solve the problem, which a lot of students do. They emulate these two steps all entirely. Some students don't even take the first step into consideration, which is understanding the problem. Some students, once they see the problem, they proceed to do the work and they get all confused and don't get the right answer. If you understand the problem first, then make a plan to solve the problem and carry out that plan to solve the problem, then ultimately you'll get the desired result that you want to get, which is answering correctly, all right? There's another step in the problem solving process. Can anyone tell me what they do after they're finished with solving the problem? So you carry out the plan to solve the problem, the problem is already solved, right? So do you move on to the next problem or do you do something else? Michaela, what do you think is the thing? All right. So on the screen, you can see the problem solving steps, the four steps in the, so today we looked at the four steps in the problem solving process. And step one was to understand the problem. Step two was to make a plan for solving the problem. Step three was to carry out the plan. And then four, we look back and reflect on the answer in terms of the initial question, which is basically saying you look at the question to make sure that it did what, or you did, sorry, what the question asks you to do, right? And then finally, you look at your answer to make sure that your answer is correct. As a good problem solver, you will ask yourself some probing questions like what I do in my sessions, like what I was doing earlier, to ask you, why is it important to solve the problem um, or understand the problem? Why do you think um, it is important to make a plan how you think it will affect you if you don't carry out the plan as according to what you made before. So those are probing questions to make sure that you're picking your brain to bring out the information that's needed to solve the problem. You have to monitor your progress. Constantly look at what you're doing. Look at the plan that you're making. Um, look at the assessment that you would have made initially about the problem. Um, look for the important points and to read over more than one so you can just understand what it is asking you to do. Some of the choices that you make to say, this is what the problem asks me to do, you can reevaluate that to think back about it and to say that if it was the correct thing that you were supposed to be doing. When you make a plan, <clears throat> basically you gain an insight into the relationship or see the relationship that <clears throat> mathematics, sorry, <clears throat> mathematics in the classroom has with mathematics in real life, our problem solving in real life. And then we also find sophisticated ways of just planning out our problem and devising strategies that we're going to use to solve our problem. Again, how to make a plan is to use keywords, and clues to act it out or use tokens or counters. We explained about those earlier. You can draw a picture or a diagram, find a pattern, guess and check, make accurate guesses and check to make sure that it is correct. We can use tables or charts, use a number line, write a number sentence or equation. We can also work backwards and simplify the problem. Again, reach out to me via the number that I would have shared in the chat or the email. I'm going to share with you some videos on how to basically approach each of these strategies.
When you carry out the plan, you're carefully monitoring your solution procedure. When we looked at how um, if you made a plan while you're on a football team to do a certain activity on the team, and when you're supposed to perform or the time that comes that you're supposed to be carrying out that plan or applying that plan, you don't do what was planned, you don't get the same results. So it's important for you to carry out what you set out to do. So if you say that you're going to use that table and to identify the keywords, that's what you have to do and to make sure that it is properly aligned to make sure that you get the correct results. And then finally, you're looking back at the problem. Check the reasonableness of your answer. Is this looking like something that could be the answer? Sometimes we're very far off and we keep these far off answers and we can simply look at the answer and look at what we started out with and to say that if this answer is just way off, if you add 21 and 20, you cannot get a thousand or something like that, right? And if the solution that you did, if it makes sense, does it in your, in your mind, this is what you think the question asks you to do. And how do you know it's correct? You have to try other ways to make sure that you know it's correct. So if you try a fractional diagram, you can work it out to make sure that it's correct. If you write an equation, you can plot in the numbers to make sure that the equation is correct. If you do, for, an, for instance, multiplication, you can divide to make sure that it's correct or addition, you subtract various ways to check if your answer is correct. And that's what you should be doing for every problem that you're addressing, all right? So let's do the revision of the steps, the problem solving steps. The first thing that you're going to do is to understand the problem. How did you restate the problem? When you're restating the problem, you're basically just using over information that you would have been in the problem and stating it another way. Um, we have a little time we can look at a problem just to examine the issues. And that's the link that I sent before in the chat. I'm sharing it once more. All right. And then we carry out the, no, we're restating the problem to make sure that we put in some of the information. Say for instance, it said that Shannon jog one and 320 of a mile yesterday and half of a mile today. How much miles did she jog in total? You can restate it to say that Shannon jog um, this amount of miles in total because if she jogged one and three over 20 plus the half of a mile, this is what it would be. So that's a restatement of the problem. We have to make a plan for solving the problem. And as I said, to make a plan, you're basically just choosing a strategy to solve the problem, to carry out the plan. Sometimes when we're carrying out the plan, the plan doesn't work. We see that whatever we plan to do, it's not giving us the answer. We don't stick to that same plan and that's how plan B and C comes in. We try to find other plans or to use that plan that we initially set out with. Say, for instance, we say that we're going to identify keywords and clue words. If we choose that as a plan, when we are doing our planning and we see that that does not suffice, it doesn't work by itself, we add another plan, which is drawing the, the helpful diagram. And then we can use both of those plans together to solve the problem. Then finally, we look back and reflect on the answer in terms of the initial problem. Are there any ways to solve my problem? Could I be doing this another way? Right? And more importantly, did I do what the problem asked me to do? So those are the steps in the problem solving process. I'm going to quickly toggle to the problem and we see how we can apply those steps to solve the problem. So we're looking at the tiled floor situation or scenario on the web page that was shared in the chat. So it says, on the last day with Uncle Larry, Travis worked with Mr. Wilson on laying tiles on the kitchen floor. Travis worked all morning and he was a bit discouraged when he realized his first break, sorry, when he reached his first break and realized that he had only finished about one third of the floor. 
I can mess around with these. So let me restate the scenario. On the last day with Uncle Larry, Travis worked with Mr. Wilson and Lane Cat on the kitchen floor. Travis worked all morning and he was a bit discouraged when he reached the first break and realized that he had only finished about one third of the floor. It had taken Travis two hours to tile one third of the floor. He thought about this as he drank from his water bottle and ate an apple. If it took me this long to tile one third, how long would it take me to finish? Travis wondered. So I've highlighted the problem in this scenario. The floor is divided into 12 sections. If he has finished one third of them, how many sections has he completed? This is the number that was completed in two hours. How many sections does he has does he have left to complete? About how long will it take him to finish the rest? So this is the problem. And the first thing we need to do is understand what this is problem. This problem is asking us to do. In this lesson, we're going to look at the problem solving process of drawing a helpful diagram. Sorry, the problem solving strategy of drawing a helpful diagram. So that's the strategy that we're going to be using to draw a picture or to draw a helpful diagram. So we're going to try to draw this picture here to depict how long it will take for Travis to finish in the rest, finish the rest of the floor by finding out how many sections he has left to complete. And that will tell you how long, right? But again, we have to read over the problem to make sure that we understand what it is asking us to do. So it says the floor is divided into 12 sections. If he has finished one third of them. So first thing we need to do is to try to depict out 12 sections or to draw 12 sections. And then try to find one third of that 12 section. So that is how much that has been completed. And that's the amount that is done in two hours. So after we find out the amount of sections that he has completed, then we can look at the diagram. And that's the beauty of using a diagram or a picture to solve your problem. You can literally look at it. It's a visual thing that you can use to solve your problem. And it works many times. So when you draw your diagram, you can clearly see how much sections were tiled and how much were untiled. And then based on that, you can determine how long will it take for it to finish tiling the floor. And that's how we basically break down the problem to understand it, all right? All right. Let's go to the whiteboard and try to see how best we can decipher out this problem and flesh it out and to see what we're doing by using the plan, carrying out the plan um, or developing the plan, developing the strategy and carrying it out or using this plan to solve the problem. And then finally just look back over the problem and the answer to make sure that we did the correct thing. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is trying to draw the tiled floor. So we can draw a rectangle here to represent the tile floor and to get the tiles in now. So we want 12 sections. So we can go four down and three across. So we're creating four columns. They're not as even. I wanted them to be as even as possible. Over this information, or go over depicting this information. I'm reading from my web page. It says that we need twelve sections, and we're sh shading or highlighting one third. Can you respond in the chat? What is one third of twelve? How do you know what is? one third of 12, what are you doing to find one third of 12? And then you can share with me your answer. 
slide on over to the chat now and tell me what is one third of 12. So we have 12 sections here and we're shading one third. Not seeing anyone in the chat as yet. Malik, you can unmute your microphone. What is one third of 12? How do we find one third of 12? Can anyone assist? So we're looking at fractions and we're looking at one third of 12. 12 sections here. So that's the whole and that's the number, that's the denominator. So we can put that at the bottom if we're representing a fraction. The denominator is always the whole and we have 12 pieces, so we put the 12 here to be the whole. The numerator, no. Can anybody tell me what the numerator is? Or what does the numerator represent? The whole. So how we find one third of 12? Simple, we divide 12 by three. So it's a third, we divide it by three. It was a, if it was a quarter, we divide it by four. If it was one fifth, we divide it by five. So we can divide 12 by three. I'm gonna use the division sign. Let me just put the three here. I'll use my pencil tool or my annotate tool to the division. 12 divided by 12. Now you can provide me with an answer. What is 12? Div divided by three, sorry, two there, either ways. What is 12 divided by three? Can anyone tell me what is 12 divided by three? In the chat or otherwise? Twelve divided by three. All right, four. Thank you, Tasha. So twelve divided by three equals four. So that's four sections that we're going to be shading. Um. We spoke earlier about description, so we can write a title here, tiled floor or Travis, Travis, Travis's tiled floor. We can give it a name. And then we can say that there were 12 sections. So the floor was cut into 12 sections. 12 sections, the floor. sections and four sections were tied four sections four sections were tied so we can go ahead and tile the four sections or to shade the four sections by doing this. So that's the four sections of the kitchen floor that was tiled and we're just going to go across. By looking at the diagram and I have not finished as yet, but I know that you can basically see the answer already to see how much, what fraction did he tile? And then you can clearly see how much is left to be tiled. So the whole is 12 and the amount of parts that we have out of the 12 is four parts. So that's four over 12 or one third. All right. <laughs> and this is the part, four parts. I hope everyone is, understanding clearly what we're doing. 
All right. And let's use another description here to say that four sections were tiled or one third of the floor was tiled. So now we can look at what is left. We can clearly count. This is the beauty, as I was explaining earlier, about Okay, Camellia. So we can clearly see what is left. Let's count one portion, two portion, three portion, four portion, five sections are portions six, seven, eight. So we can clearly see that eight was left or two third. We can say that eight sections, which is eight out of 12 or two third was left. Eight sections were left to be tiled. We got our answer for left. Be tiled. Eight sections or two third, two thirds sections were left to be tiled. And then we left with eight out of 12. All right. So now when we talk about how long did it take now, we can say that if it took two hours to tile four over 12 or one third of the floor, how long will it take to tile the remaining, which is the eight out of 12 or two thirds? Can anyone respond in the chat how long it will take? Yes, thank you very much again, Camelia. How long will it take? So if it took two hours, let me write that down as a description on the screen. I hope you're on the link. I'm going to share about the link. Um, it's very important to be on this link because this link has a lot of useful examples of how to use diagrams to solve our problem. There's also a section at the bottom that says time to practice. And there you can do your individual practices and draw the diagrams to solve the problem. Again, reach out to me via email or with the number provided. And you can get additional resources such as the videos that teaches you how to use the different problem solving strategies to solve the problem. So let's write that it took two hours to solve it to or to tile not to solve to tile the floor or the one third of the floor in particular Sorry. one third of the floor so how long will it take to tile eight out of 12 or the two thirds of the four? So it took two hours to tile the four section. How long do you think it will take to tile the remaining four sections? We can also provide a working note here to say that. And in the meantime, again, you can copy from what is on the screen just to see how you can lay out your problem and to have it fleshed out, um, descriptive working out using your diagram to solve your problem along with your working notes as alternative options or just for check. We we'll talk about checking and monitoring our progress by just working out it to see if it does work. Um, or just to aid with working out and fleshing out our problem so we can get to our answer. 
So if it took two hours, so four took two hours. So eight, we can add the two plus two to get the eight, the eight section. So if two for four, say four and four, eight. So now we can add the two hours plus two hours to get how long it will take to tile the eight sections. So now we can look at two hours plus two hours. And then we get to four hours. And that's how long it took to complete the remaining eight parts or sections. All right. So we can now put our statement here to say it took and you. It is very good to have your working out clean and to be descriptive as you're do, as I'm doing now. So you make sure that there's no loose ends and you understand everything that you're doing and you have your description. So even if you're looking back over, you can say, all right, four sections were tiled. One third of the floor was tiled. Eight or two third sections were left to be tiled. And now it took two hours to tile the one third of the floor. Therefore, it must take four hours to tile what is left. Tile. Tile. Eight sections. Let me see how this I can bring this up off this. All right. And then we can go further with this problem. Even though it didn't ask us, we can ask ourselves, just ask good problem solvers to say. So if it took four hours to tile eight sections and it took two hours to tile one third or four sections then we can say how long did it take to tile the entire floor the entire kitchen floor so if it took two hours here two hours here two hours here because all of these are four going across and it would take two hours each and that's how we got the eight two hours plus the two hours that's how we got the four hours for the eight sections, then we can add another two hours and get six hours to tile the entire kitchen floor. All right. I hope you learned a lot today and you were able to grasp the information. I hope you're still writing in your notebooks and taking down the notes here. Again, refer to the resources that I've shared. Use up me as a support. So you can get through your examinations that your parents reach out to me and I will assist you even in your day-to-day -day activities at school that you're having challenges with, whatever it might be, to just lend a helping hand so you're able to maneuver through this term in getting back to school again online. So it's just really the support that I'm here providing. Um, I have videos to share with really, the problem solving strategies. Again, I'm going to compile a document, a Word or a PDF document with the notes for today. And then you can reach out and read those notes, use up the videos. And again, continue to join the sessions, go back on our YouTube page and look at the information there look at the pre-writing strategies. That's what we're going to be doing in our upcoming sessions as well. Um, this is the first problem solving strategy video in detail that I posted on the website, the YouTube page. We have more to come. Just continue to stay tuned and be a home guest or a, just a participant in our classes and you'll be surprised to see the amount of things you learned. Again, I have the recommendations from what the students would have said earlier and how the videos help them. 
Again, you can also just subscribe to this page and see all of the videos that are, are posted. We have the true source to the PEP examination, and I know the skill sets and the strategies that you need to learn in order to do well. So just continue to put your best foot forward, just the initiative for you to sit in this class today that shows that you want to learn. And we're going to just work on that and use up the resources and get the results that we so deem necessary. All right. That's basically where we end for today. Thank you for joining me. My name is Miss Bowen. Go to the web YouTube page. This video will be there and you can watch over what we learned today in its entirety. All right. Bye. Okay.